Number seven ministries. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed number seven ministries when god did the foundation when he laid the foundation and he did the framework of our bodies he wasn't just done there he laid all his tools and his instruments on the inside see when we when we get our houses finished then we want to move in the furniture we want to deck it the way that we were comfortable with but when you got Jesus and all his attributes residing on the inside you got to be mindful see who's living there amen you got to be mindful that you have everything that he needs amen some love in this room, joy over there, peace over here, patience is well laid, hallelujah, hallelujah. We got to occupy each room according to God. See, some of us have some closets in our house that we haven't cleaned. Sometimes we take closets and sometimes we just... It become our stores being. We just throw stuff. You know, anybody ever seen the, uh, I think it's the two second tidy? Molly and the two second tidy. Now that, see, I'm a caregiver for children. <laughs> Hallelujah. So they have this one show and it's Molly. I don't know if that's the name. Is that the name of it? What's the name of it? The Big Comfy Couch. The Big Comfy Couch. <laughs> and you ever see Molly? Yeah. Molly running around in so many seconds and she cleaning her house and she got this big old couch that's bigger than, big as her house, big as the room and she got all kind of toys and junk just scattered abroad and then she got a few seconds to clean it up and it, it puts me in the mind of when Jesus on his way back, how if we knew he was on his way back, we would do differently. <laughs> Be like, wait a minute, Jesus. Hallelujah, I got to get the... Uh, wait, there go a dirty pair. Uh, and, and she's sticking everything up under the pillows of the couch. And when she get done, she... And sit on it. Like, whew, I'm done. <laughs> and her husband just is clean. <laughs> That's what we call surface cleaning. <laughs> Amen. 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 But we have to be mindful, hallelujah, that God is telling us to occupy this space until he returns. And, you know, for us that are in Christ Jesus, we know that God has given us a guideline on just what to do. See, every house has rules. Amen. Every house has rules and for time's sake, in Genesis, uh, I mean Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17, it'll tell you the guidelines of your house. When you have it, say amen. And I'm just going to go through it quickly. But later on, you can go back and you can read it. Hallelujah. Amen. 20. Amen. Twenty of chapter, verses 1 through 17. When you have it, say amen. <coughs> it said, God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. We no longer bound. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Hallelujah. Not even your house. 
Not your car. Hallelujah. Not your husband. Not your wife. Not your food. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. And I'm visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. These are the commandments of God. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Hallelujah. God set a day apart for his glory. Hallelujah. For you to do nothing but give it to him. Hallelujah. So when you come in God's house, Stop looking at your watch. Allow God to do that which he want to do. Amen. We need him more now than ever before. Amen. It's getting late in the evening. The sun is going down. It's time to get it right with God. Set your house in order. This here will teach you how to set it in order. Then it goes on to say, honor thy father and thy mother. That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And, it, and, and when he says this, this is a commandment with a promise. He say, honor her or him and your days will be lengthened. Amen. So your days can be shortened. Hallelujah. And see, some people look at right now, yeah, I mouthed her off, but nothing happened. Oh, something happened. You just don't understand what happened. Not just yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like Adam and Eve, when they obeyed the Father, there was consequences. He didn't come just right then and there. But when it came looking for him, he said, where are you, Adam? We got to give an account. Hallelujah. God is saying, where are you? Hallelujah. Are you in God's house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thou should not commit adultery. We all know what adultery is. And just in case we don't, it's when you're married and you're going outside of your marriage. Some people think fornication and adultery is the same thing. It's not. Fornication is when you're not married and you go out. But adultery is when you have a marriage and you go outside. Amen. Amen. Thou should not steal. My mother used to say if you steal, you a lie. Or if you lie, you steal. Hallelujah. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So stealing is of the enemy. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's the lie I'm talking about. See, it's something about a lie. A lie always have to be supported by another lie. A lie only have one leg to stand on. So you have to make another leg for it. But the truth can stand all by itself. Hallelujah. Truth will stand whether it's told in the dark. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou ask nor anything that is thy neighbor's, even in the house of the Lord. Don't covet. God has given us all gifts. Stay in your lane. Hallelujah. Quit saying I can do that better than her. 
Oh, I could have preached that better than him. God has given us all gifts. He said we're all fearfully and wonderfully made. So the gift that God has given you, work with what he's given you. Hallelujah. He'll give you an increase. He said your gift will make room for you. It will. But you've got to let your gift be manifested. Quit looking at other people's gifts. And focus on your own gift. Amen. Amen. And in my closing, I want to just, you could jot these couple of scriptures down. Because I don't want to be before you too, too long. Where did I stick them? Psalms 127 and 1. And it confirms that what I said is true about except God builds a house. Write down Matthew 5 and 6. And it's talking about if you hunger and thirst for righteousness. See, then that's where the manifestation take place. You got to be thirsty for God. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5 17 talks about if any man being in Christ he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. And the last thing in my closing I'm going to talk about but write this down, Galatians 6 and 9. And the last one is Ephesians 1 through 5. And if I may, I'll read. I'll read those two. But what, what I want to say to you is that... <laughs> We have to learn how to trust God. Amen. We have to learn how to use the faith that God has given us. Every man has a measure of faith. Amen. And we have to learn how to use the faith that God has given us. See, because when we begin to use what God has given, then God begins to add to that which you have given. If you don't use it, guess what? You lose it. Hallelujah. See, we got we to gotta start getting into our word. This is the foundation of God. We have to start getting into our word. Our word has to be the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. See, because when you get in the word, you'll find out that the word has everything that we need. There's not a circumstance or a situation that we might encounter that is not in this word of God. God strategically applied the word for our lives here because he knew he lived by example. Amen. So in this word you'll find out that Peter trusts God by faith. Peter was standing on the water and he was looking at God and he was saying, Lord, if that be you, forbid, I mean, bid me to come. God told him, come. Peter began to walk on the water. But in a few seconds, Peter took his eyes off the Lord and he began to lose focus. Not only that, he lost his balance and began to sink. We got to keep our eyes on the prize. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Amen. keep your eye on the prize. Yeah, the prize. Hallelujah. 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 
there was a woman at the well that, hallelujah, God had came and he was, he was on a journey and he sat down and he was getting a rest or taking a breath. And this woman came with her water pot. And this woman that came to the, to the well to get some water, she normally would come at a certain time of the day with the other women. But see, the women that she friended had turned on her. See, because, see, you got to understand, hallelujah, that you got to keep it in the house. See, because when you go outside the house looking for uh, uh, suggestions or you go to get advice, you find out you're getting all the wrong things. Because remember what I said in the beginning, that a spiritual man can conceive the things I mean, the natural man cannot receive the things of a spiritual man. So we on two different levels. You really got the upper hand, but the devil flipped the script. You got the upper hand. Why are you going outside the house to get anything? I don't want nothing the devil has to offer. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I'll be a friend that's sticking closer to a, than a brother. You ain't got to go outside the house. You got a friend here. There's a friend there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, what I have joined together, let no man put asunder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a bridegroom. Hallelujah. So, in saying that this woman... She couldn't no longer walk with the other women because, see, when she was walking with them, she was talking. They learned too much about her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They became backbiters. They knew her business. She told them too much. She entrusted them when she should have been trusting the Almighty God. So now, in her shamefulness, she had to wait until they have already gone and they done returned to their houses to go to get her water, to draw from the well. So when she get there, Jesus was sitting there. And Jesus began to ask her a question. Where is your husband? I don't know if she was, what's on the inside was coming out, being flirtatious when she saw Jesus. Because she had an unfamiliar spirit. She did. I don't know if she was being flirtatious. But Jesus was sitting there minding his own business. And she don't know that she came at the right time. Hallelujah. And Jesus looked at her and he said, where's your husband? And she probably did like some of us, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I heard somebody say, are you married? And I heard somebody say, no, but my husband is. Oh. <laughs> I said, whoa. Mm. Well, all right. <laughs> uh-huh. So Jesus said, where is your husband? And she said, I don't have one. <laughs> Jesus said, you didn't lie. You told the truth this time. He said, because the man at your house is not yours. See, he belonged to somebody else. That's why she couldn't walk with the other women. They knew too much. They knew she had a whoremonging spirit. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. See, we talk Jesus and we say Jesus on the inside, but we working on the outside. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, you know, you have told the truth. And that truth, guess what it did? Made her free. Freed her. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, and the same but a different story with the woman with the issue of blood by faith. She entrusted God. This woman had a problem for 12 long years. She had a stench. 
and she had an internal bleeding that would not stop for 12 years. How many of you know that our bodies is made up of so many ounces or portion of blood and water? <clears throat> this woman heard that Jesus was coming into her city. Now let me just tell you a little bit about this woman. This woman, she, uh, she had this problem and this woman I believe was a wealthy woman because the Bible said that she paid all she had to many physicians but none could heal her. Hallelujah, and that's just like us. We're going to get a quick fix. All we got to do is hear something, and we running. Hallelujah. There was a, some kind of a singer or rapper. His mother had got some type of surgery. I think it was like a lipo or something. She got, yeah. And because, see, she got it, and she looked all right. Don't mean you going to get it and you going to be all right. Amen. See, what God has for you is for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. What God has for me is for me. But what God has for the body <laughs> is for us. Amen. Amen. So quit trying to get my stuff. Stay in your lane. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So this woman, anyway, she heard that Jesus was coming. Now, this woman, she smelled bad. She looked bad. People could not tolerate her smell. And there was, I can imagine now, a lot of whispering and talking going on about this woman. And she didn't hardly even come out of her house because she couldn't even go and sit on a, let's say a bus because no one could sit in the seat after her. So the woman tried everything that she possibly could and so she heard Jesus was coming and she said, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go see Jesus. She got thirsty. And I'm not talking about, yes I am, I'm talking about the thirsty like in the world. But not lustfully. She got thirsty. We got to get thirsty for Jesus. And so she got thirsty and I can imagine her hurrying up and, you know, washing up. And even though it didn't help, putting on her garment and whatever else she needed to do. Now, we, in the world, we worried about what our nails looking like. I didn't get my hair done. Why are you not in church today? Oh, I didn't have nothing to wear. Somebody told me yesterday, but they were joking. <laughs> they were asked, why weren't you in church? He said, I didn't have nothing to wear. So sister say, uh, well, you got clothes on now. He say, oh, I borrowed these from my neighbor. <laughs> I said, Lord, help. We got all kind of excuses of why we can't get to God's house. Amen. My hair ain't done. Nails ain't done. I didn't get waxed. Don't have the proper clothing. Overslept. Overslept. But let Monday morning hit those with jobs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We more mindful to the alarm clock than we are. Ooh, the creator. Mm -hmm. That ain't who woke you. God is just faithful. And he's merciful. And he loves us. And he keeps. Giving us continual mercy after mercy, grace after grace. And we just keep on doing him the way that we do. 
Well, this week my excuse is I didn't have the shoes to match my dress. I'm going next week. Oh, trust. Who told you next week was promised to you? I'll be there. The devil is bidding against you. He's saying, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. And he's going to make sure of it. Because he knows that if you're more concerned with the outer, he's going to cause you not to even be able to get the hair appointment. He's going to cause you to spend your money up where you can't get what you need for the church. Somebody going to come by and say, let's throw a cookout. It's nice out here today. Hallelujah. The holiday coming up. Come on, let's get our bottle. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know the holiday coming up, girl. We got to get it in. What you wearing? Girl, I'm going to be sharp. Shoot, well, I deserve it. I deserve it. Shoot, I work all week long. But I ain't thought about God. He deserve it. He inhabit the praises of his people. Hallelujah. He looked for you to be here. To give him a... <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You woke me up this morning. You clothed me in my right mind. God, I'm still here. Hallelujah. I saw a funeral going down the street. And thank God it wasn't me. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm still here. Hallelujah. No, I don't have everything that I want. That's okay. But I'm here. I got life. Hallelujah. If you got life, Jesus said, you can have it in, in abundance. Hallelujah. But in my closet, the woman at the well, I mean the woman with the issue of blood, she pressed out and made her way to Jesus. I don't care what people are saying about me. I don't care how I look to them. I'm looking to Jesus. He told me to look to the hill from what's coming my help. And I realize all my help coming from the Lord. So I'm going to press my way to Jesus. I don't care that it's a cookout going on. Hallelujah. I don't care how many people are going to be there. I don't care how much drink you have. I don't care how much food there is. Hallelujah. I'm on my way to see Jesus. Because I know in him I can get help. Hallelujah. So she pressed her way. And she got there and there was a big old crowd. And she began to try to maneuver her way through the crowd. And they were pressing upon Jesus. Everybody was thirsty at the same time. And everybody's need was greater than the others. Hallelujah. But finally, she had a brainstorm. She said that if I can just touch the hem of 